Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled City Council meeting. The meeting is called to order. I kindly ask our City Clerk to please take the roll call. Mike Bruno, here. Tara Burkhardt is here. Here. Don Cummings. Uh, one moment, oh. Mr. Clerk. Uh, Alderman Burkhardt is joining us by telephone, so when you announce her for anything, she will announce her name and respond in kind. Okay. So if you take her role, she'll announce her name and respond as she is present. All right. Tara? Uh, Burkhardt here. Thank you. Don Cummings. Here. Becky Ruby. Here. Dean Kilberg. Craig Maladra. Here. Richard Marks. Here. Gene McGowan. Here. Jim Radecki. Here. Robert Swanson. Here. Ladies and gentlemen, tuning in and also joining us live, uh, a council member can join the council meeting or a committee meeting via telephone if either A, they are ill, or B, away on business. So Alderman Burkhart's participation this evening via telephone is permitted by law. We begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, and it's my pleasure to introduce everyone to PAC 111 We Blows. Right, gentlemen? These guys join us at 6.30 this evening. We had a good Q&A. It's like 60 minutes in its heyday. So gentlemen, when you're ready, lead us in the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done, guys. I did advise the Weeblos and their moms and dads if they need to sneak out. That's absolutely understood. But it, and there they go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> item three, ladies and gentlemen, public hearings, special items, and presentations. Item 3A is to a proclamation celebrating the 2018 Illinois Bicentennial Year. So moved. Motion by Alderman Marks. Second. Seconded by Alderman Swanson. Uh, all of you should know that we did receive, in fact, from the Illinois Municipal League via the state of Illinois a bicentennial flag, which will be raised and remain as such for, I believe, God, like a year, right? And it's raised below the state flag. So you'll see two flags on the state flag pole. So don't be alarmed. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of so proclaiming, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Alderman Burkhart? Uh, aye. Alderman uh, Burkhart, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item 3B, ladies and gentlemen, is the Mental Health Board annual report presentation. And we have the august body with us this evening, including its chairman. Welcome. You guys walked in on the Q&A with the Weeblos. We did. Yeah. <laughs> Felt honored. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Burns and City Council members. My name is Susie Shogren, and I serve as the chairperson of the Geneva Mental Health Board. And I'm very proud to introduce to you the six other members of the board. They are Connie Wagner, Christine Kautz, Jean Gaines, Rick Gabriel, uh, Vice Chairperson Eleanor Hamilton and Carrie Holman, who cannot be here tonight because she has a sick child. Uh, we would first like to thank many of the city employees, especially City Administrator Stephanie Dawkins, who is prompt in sharing her knowledge and guidance with the business questions of the Mental Health Board. We also would like to thank Jean Fernari, who is our communication liaison and seeks out the answers to administrative questions. And a big thanks to Pete Collins and Kevin Starr, who have provided technological and communication support for us throughout the year. The Geneva Mental Health Board is a seven-member board, which is comprised of individuals who have a sincere and passionate regard for Geneva residents who are in need of services for developmental disabilities, mental health, and or for substance abuse and addiction. Professionally, the members of this board either have worked or are currently working in the medical, business, and education fields. Collectively, their professional skills and expertise provide for an insightful and informed ability for each member to discuss make decisions, and carry out the responsibilities relative to the people the 708 Mental Health Board was created to serve. 
It is our hope that all residents of Geneva seek out the resources available to them when they find themselves in any kind of need. We believe no one person is greater or lesser than the next. We hope our community has a conscious purpose and a collective dream to support one another. One of the best ways to demonstrate that sentiment is through social support, especially in times of crisis. With some creative and inspirational help from Frank Capra's classic holiday movie, It's a Wonderful Life, the purpose, mission statement, goals, objectives, and actions of this board will be further explained in this presentation. What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Barry. Oh, I'm losing audio here. We can call Pete from the, uh, the bowels. <laughs> Mr. Collins, here he is, folks. <laughs> no, no audio. There was audio on this, too. All right. It was in the beginning with the... Um, with the video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, is it here? No. Well, I've got it open as loud as I can go. Let's see, are you hearing anything? Uh, just the video clip. You're going without okay. audio. Okay, all right, we'll do so. that. So we're going without audio. <laughs> I'll read through some of the um, notes here. I actually have some, some notes from it. So um, the goals of the Geneva Mental Health Board are carried out in three arenas. They are finance, advocacy, and education. And in 1989, Geneva residents passed a referendum that provided for the creation of the Mental Health Board. The primary responsibility of the board is to solicit, review, and allocate grant funds to well-qualified community agencies and providers that serve Geneva residents. The board maintains a relationship with these providers to keep them informed of the funds allocation process. We use data to make funding decisions and to, um, sorry, lost my spot as I'm clicking through here, um, to make funding decisions. We attempt to earn our wings through advocacy and education efforts. The board advocates for sufficient and effective developmental disability, mental illness, and substance abuse addiction services by assessing the needs of our community, gathering information from the Association of Community Mental Health Authorities of Illinois, and we become familiar with these decisions made by law and policymakers in an effort to be able to discuss the impact those decisions have on our community. In terms of education goals, we collaboratively encourage community education and awareness of developmental disability, mental illness, and substance abuse resources. We work cooperatively with so local service providers to educate the public through a variety of events and opportunities, such as National Mental Health Awareness Month presentations or activities. May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. This past May, we invited a mental health first aid community liaison educator from Linden Oaks Behavioral Health Center to give a presentation entitled, A Layperson's Guide to Mental Illness. The public was invited to the presentation, which was held in cooperation with the Geneva Public Library. The presentation explained what mental illness is, the impact mental illness has on a community and the economy, as well as, ex as explained treatment options and what we all can do about the stigma attached to mental illness. A question and answer discussion followed the presentation. The Mental Health Board conduct, conducts the business of its funding responsibility in November of each year. 
This year, 11 service providers received grant funds. Those funds provided services to approximately 1,792 Geneva residents. The grant contains, excuse me, the grant application contains criteria that requires pertinent informa information, such as the number of Geneva residents served, revenue and costs of those services, an explanation of how funds will be utilized, and both quantitative and qualitative outcome data, which is used for analysis. I wish I had a million dollars. Hot dog! While we don't have a million dollars to give away, the 11 service providers who received the grant funds are very grateful for their financial support. The service providers utilize the funds in various ways to carry out their missions. Some, but not all, examples include emotional wellness programs, intake services, counseling, family-to-family -family educational presentations, direct crisis intervention, hotline calls, support groups, medically assisted treatment services, including opioid treatment programs, case management, online resource guides, food and shelter for the homeless, employment assistance, transportation for developmentally disabled, therapeutic recreation, mental health services for senior citizens, caregiver support, and respite opportunities, permanent housing, vocational training, and community case coordination services. Some of the guest speakers who shared their efforts as friends of our community are the Association of Individual Development, who make sure that Geneva residents with developmental disabilities receive the unique and vital services they need to lead independent lives of dignity and purpose. We also heard from the Director of Student Services from Geneva School District 304, who presented us with an overview of their programs and an explanation of services available to students. She also explained the transitioning process of integrating students who have been hospitalized back into the school day and schedule. And we were fortunate to hear from Officer Mark Russo, who is the Community Liaison Mental Health Officer with the Geneva Police Department. And he shared how many police officers are receiving critical incidents training to assist them in dealing with calls that involve individuals with mental illness or are experiencing substance abuse or addiction issues. Additionally, we spoke with the community outreach person from the National Alliance on Mental Illness in Kane County, who offered her services as a resource for any individual in need of treatment. We also learned of the Ending the Silence Suicide Prevention Program offered and utilized in our school system. On the wall of George Bailey's office is a sign that reads, all that you can take with you is that which you have given away. It is our hope that we all recognize the need for community and support for those in our own Geneva on the River who struggle or are in need. The movie's themes such as the value of a human life, how much influence one person has on another, the love of family and friends, and what it takes to build and be a part of a community remind us to continue to prioritize the social service needs of the residents in Geneva. Through the use of the 708 grant funds, Geneva is helping to sustain the 11 service providers' efforts in what they do to administer preventive, direct, and therapeutic services. In Geneva's commitment to carry out the mission of the 708 board by financially supporting, educating, and advocating, we increase the likelihood for all of us to proclaim it's a wonderful life. And in front of you, you should have a copy um, of a list of the service providers and their grant requests, as well as a copy of an anecdotal story from uh, one of those service providers. The names in the story were changed to maintain anonymity. And um, it's a story that tells of the impact that our funds have had on one family in particular in a number of ways to carry out dignified care, as well as support um, for the caregivers. Thank you, Madam Chairman. You're welcome. And thank you all who serve on the board.
appreciate it very much. Questions or comments from the dais for Chairman Schroeder and, and or any member of the Mental Health Board? Alderman Ruby. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. Um, I'm just curious if you or anyone here knows about um, approximate attendance of the presentation last May at the library. Um, smaller than we had hoped. Of course. <laughs> um, it was a wonderful May evening weather-wise. I would say approximately 15 to 20 members. Okay. Our mayor was in attendance. <laughs> Are there other events throughout the year similar to that? Uh, we usually just target May okay. as our one time a year okay. cause to kind of honor the awareness. Sure. And is that pretty typical for attendance? Have you, you've been doing this for we, a few years? Yes. We do something different each year. Okay. Um, two years ago, we worked with the library again and we had created um, a resource table mm -hmm. and a lot of the providers had brought their materials and we were able to create um, an online resource guide hel in helping kind of coordinate those services. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Alderman Rudecki. Thank you, um, thank you for all the work you do and also for your, your entire board. So thank you again on behalf of the council. Um, could you give us a, a very high level or, or brief uh, description of, of how you, what criteria you use when you evaluate um, the organizations that you give money to, you know, is it the size, what you gave last year, what their need is, what their, do you have any general criteria that you guys follow we when do. you make these decisions? Can you give us a, just a real quick and dirty of that? Sure. So we have approximately four criteria that we follow. Um, the primary one is the number of Geneva residents that are served um, because we are utilizing tax dollars. Um, we also look at what type of um, uh, service that individual or agency provides. So do they provide preventive or direct or therapeutic service? And then uh, we also look at um, their costs and revenues, um, where they get reimbursements, where they don't. And um, lastly, we kind of look at any data that they give us from uh, their last year's accounts and how they use their funds. Uh, quantitative and qualitative. Anyone else from the dais? Alderman McGowan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Also, I wanted to thank you for your presentation. I loved the, um, the theme that you used. It's a Wonderful Life. That's my favorite movie of all time. Um, and thank you for the rest of the board members for attending tonight as well. Um, the services you provide are invaluable. Um, are there any key things that you and the board wish that you could see coming from the city to help with your with your goals and objectives for the coming year or just going into the future? Well, I have I have one idea. Any anyone or be it a citizen or board member who um, has any ideas or suggestions um, for what they would like uh, for us to do during May as a community awareness or education effort, we would greatly w welcome any. Any ideas? And if we can provide it, we would do so. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Anyone else? Anyone from the audience? Uh, Madam Chairman, the, the question asked of, by Alderman Ruby regarding those in attendance at the May, I thought it was very telling that despite the intimate showing, there were a lot of um, organic conversations with the presenter that I it's know excellent. and you know for a fact um, evolved into relationships that were needed. Absolutely. And that, I think, was most inspiring. You know, we often will say um, many of, and, and the service providers often say, you know, they don't necessarily know if what right. they're doing um, has made a difference, but if one person Correct. was helped, the, the effort was totally worth it. Indeed. Thank you. Oh, yes. Ms. Cows, could I invite you up to the podium, please? Uh, I'd like to grill you about your high school grades. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I know what his were. <laughs> um, no, I would just like to say thank you um, for your support for that critical incidents training that you've provided to the police department. Um, we've learned through presentations and things that we've seen um, at the board meetings that that does make a difference. Um, if 
and please back me up if, if you want. Um, if they can de-escalate somebody at that moment, um, it may prevent not only um, an altercation, a physical altercation, but it may also prevent a trip to the emergency department, which not only clogs our emergency departments, and then we have to call on other mental health services. It's just this cascade of, um, of difficulty um, that really at the front line, I give our officers every bit of credit for what they do to um, try to de-escalate those people and get them to the right services before they end up in the emergency department. So in any way that you can support that training for our department um, would be greatly appreciated. Well, it's worth noting, uh, last Friday I was visiting with the chief and his team and there were a handful of officers, I believe, who were actually at the training that day. And if, if the council is not aware, or the community is not aware, if you visit with one of our police officers, uh, a officer who is trained in crisis intervention training wears a pin that says CIT. Uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating, particularly when the kids ask what that means. And when the parents are with those kids, it's, it's, it's truly impressive. So well said. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you again, Susie. Thank you all very much. And like the Weeblos, if you need to skip, skip out, feel free. <laughs> Item four, ladies and gentlemen, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening from any member of the council? Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council and can be enacted upon consideration of a motion thereto. So moved. Motion by Alderman Bruno to approve the omnibus agenda. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Marks. Questions or comments on the omnibus agenda? Hearing none, seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhart. Burkhart, aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Gene McGowan. Aye. Jim Radecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. The motion passes with nine affirmative votes, no nay votes, and one absent. We skip down to item number 10, municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Bills for payment presented $2,328,431.32. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount can be found in tonight's packet uh, on the city website. Alderman Bruno makes the motion to pay the bills as presented, which are also available in each council member's packet and on the city's website. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman McGowan. Questions or comments regarding the bills? Alderman Burkhardt, any questions or comments? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhardt. Burkhardt, aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Craig Malatra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Gene McGowan. Aye. Jim Radecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Item 10 passes with nine affirmative votes, no nay votes, and one absent. We skip down to Committee of the Whole, Items of Business. Item 11A is to recommend adoption and implementation of the compensation and classification plans for fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19 as presented. So is moved. there a motion? Second. Moved. Motion by Bruno, seconded by Marks. This matter is on the floor. Questions or comments? From the dais. Alderman Rudecki. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think the correct thing to do and the, the correct action to take with this item tonight um, is not to put it up for vote, but to move, it, move the item on to our next policy discussion. You know, this is kind of a difficult subject. It's, you know, for the simple fact that, you know, so many of our employees for the city do such a great job um, and we want to reward them. I want to reward them appropriately. I mean, the people in this room, you know, I, I don't think Chief Passarelli sleeps. He gets back to you in an instant, which as people do. There's a lot of fine work that's done, and people should be compensated accordingly for that. I, I truly believe that. Um, 
who, who wouldn't want to pay their good employees the right amount of money? But that's not what this is really all about, the discussion that I'd like to have now. It's about our policy, how we make policy and sound policy making process. You know, since the meeting that we had last week on this topic, which is a, a significant financial um, consideration, uh, you know, I have more unanswered questions than answered questions. And, you know, a few that come to my mind are, you know, do you feel comfortable getting the presentation last week with nothing in advance of the cow packet? Or, you know, as Craig likes to say, you know, were we legislating or making policy on the fly a little bit there? Do you think we, we have or will be losing employees in the future due to non-competitive overall compensation packages? I don't think that question was answered at all. Um, do you think your constituents would support a $500,000 plus enhancement to the employee pay over the next two years, which of course will have a multiplying factor you know, well beyond that? Um, do you believe that the city's financial picture is in, the, is in the condition that was presented at the special call on June 30th? We had a pretty uh, bleak picture painted there. Um, if we approve this expenditure, do you think we send a mixed message to voters in the spring primary when we ask for the sales tax increase? Um, do you disagree with the report we received that indicated that Geneva's current compensation position is highly competitive? And I believe Alderman Ruby said, why have the report if you're not going to accept the findings? And we're going to quibble over what the, what the verbiage is in it. Um, do you think we should be bound to a policy of, this, of meeting the 50% or median value that was set by a council 12 years ago? And since that time, there's been six separate councils that have sat on that. Um, I mean, there's a lot of policies that were adopted in the prior council to this that we no longer um, adopt. And, and that's okay, but that's what we, that's what we should be doing. Um, one question I had, you know, I don't know, do you think the consultant was acting as an advocate for the, for the increase? And, and should they have been? It kind of felt like it to me. You know, and given the fact that we've really had no discernible fallout or problems over the last 12 years from it, you know, is it really a prudent thing to do is to move this forward to a vote tonight? I mean, that's really my question. You know, I guess if any of these things, you know, I can see Craig's thinking, you know, answers to some of these things. And that's the point of this is, you know, there's a lot of discussion to be had with this. And, and the problem that I have is I cannot vote for the proposal tonight until we have a greater a policy discussion that I think is in greater detail. I think so, you know, if we had the vote tonight, um, I would have to vote no. And that would be patently unfair to the employees. That wouldn't be right for them. And if we took the vote tonight without some serious policy discussion, um, I also think that it's conversely unfair to the folks who are actually going to pay for this increase, and it's significant, and that would be the voters. I think it's unfair to both groups. So um, thanks for listening to me. You know, in my opinion, um, you know, my request to you is to uh, have a consideration of moving this more towards a policy discussion uh, and, and moving it forward to that, not stalling it, not delaying it, but moving it on forward to what I think is the proper channel to have it. So thank you for the time. Alderman Malaga? Mr. Alderman Malaga? Yeah. Um, so we spoke about this the first time in January of 2017. That was when the Special Committee of the Whole requested that this study be done. And my opinion at that time, we took a step and, and we opened up Pandora's box. Um, we talked about it again in June of this year. And we're talking about it again in December. So um, I've seen us do what I call policy on the fly, where we've changed organization structures in the matter of one hour discussion. This has garnered three separate meetings and multiple discussions. Um, I question what the intent of the council was in requesting this study. Um, we had to know that there was a really good chance that the results would indicate that we were low. Um, we set a policy something like five years ago and stopped following that policy something like four years ago. And by not following that policy, we created this gap. So we created the gap. We found out that the gap exists. And now we're going to continue to kick the can down the road. It's possible we could have another discussion after what I thought was a pretty good discussion last week. Um, and we may finish that discussion in exactly the same spot we are now. I'm just not comfortable. I wasn't comfortable doing the study to begin with. I kind of feel as if we kind of got what we asked for. Um, 
A few other points. It is a big dollar amount, but I think some things need to be made clear to the public. Um, one, we're not standing here today saying that every employee in the city of Geneva is in for a big ticket. Merry Christmas, happy uh, raise. There are some jobs that are out of whack, some significantly, some jobs that are not out of whack. We will adjust where it makes sense, not unilaterally across the board. Um, the mixed message, it is unfortunate, the timing is unfortunate, but what could we do? Everybody, staff included, knew that the council demanded that we do this study. So then to sit on it, I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna do anything to question a, a certain demographic's faith in this council, I think that would be one. Oh yeah, we demanded the study, we don't like what it said, so let's bury it. Not that you're recommending we bury it, but, but we, we need to tackle it. Uh, the question about whether or not the consultant is an advocate for, for the increase. Um, in June, we unanimous, unanimously approved this consultant. Um, Gallagher is very well known in the industry and they were retained specifically to be an objective third party. It doesn't make them an advocate for an increase when they point out that we're low. Um, and again, the fact that we're low, I think intuitively we all should have seen coming. Um, so I think that this is something where, where we took a step and, and in the interests of all concerned, we have to follow through with the step that we took. That's it. For now. Alderman Bruno. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I won't repeat uh, any of what uh, Alderman Maladra said, but uh, we, we have had uh, a lot of discussion. This is something we asked for. Um, I don't think uh, adopting this, um, well, first of all, I am certainly on board with maintaining the policy of targeting the 50% uh, the midpoint. Uh, there, there isn't any reason that we wouldn't have uh, policy discussions in the future uh, about whether we do want to keep that 50% midpoint. But uh, at this point, I think we've had lots of discussion. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable with uh, adopting this. Thanks. Alderman Cummings. So to those of you who either work for or have worked for a company, but maybe even more importantly, for those of you who do work for or have worked for a company and then gone to another company and interviewed with another company and looked at what they offer, what is the first thing that you look at? And my guess is, first thing that you look at from a company that is interested in hiring you is the pay. My guess for the second thing that you look at uh, is the benefits package. You may look at where the company is, uh, the work environment. I'm guessing pay and benefits are your definition of compensation. Pay and benefits is my com definition of compensation also. In fact, fairly often on the internet, compensation is defined as, and this is not from me, the total amount of the monetary and non-monetary pay provided to an employee by an employer in return for work performed as required. It's a definition of compensation. It's found fairly often different human resources associations, that sort of thing. And so when I am interested in seeing comparisons of compensation, City of Geneva market study, November 27, 2017, Arthur J. Gallagher was engaged to perform a compensation study. to assess the competitiveness of current pay in comparison to the market and make recommendations for salary structure update. I love the first part of the sentence, compensation study. 
but I think we are missing about 50% of the data that we were looking for when we asked for a compensation study. Now someone might say, we had a benefits study not that long ago, and we looked at where we were on benefits. So we did two different things. We looked at compensation and we looked at benefits. Let me tell you an anecdotal story about separating two items and assuming that you know the results. There was a kid once that took some, some standardized tests in mathematics before he went off to school, tested in like the 94th or 93rd percentile. The kid also took some studies, some tests on English, separate test on English, came in around the 89th percentile. When those tests are combined, the kid was not in the 90th or 91st percentile of people. The kid was in the 99th percentile of people, 99th percentile, by being 94th in math and 89th or 90th in English. My worry, and there is no data to tell us otherwise, my worry is that our city may or may not be completely, completely away from our 50 percentile agreed upon, aimed for mark. Because we're looking at benefits separately from pay. I, I would love to hear an argument why we can't do a compensation, benefits and pay study to compare similar sized non-home rule communities in Illinois with Geneva. We would have very good data. Right now, we have one study on some cities for benefits, one study on some cities for pay. If your surety factor in your decision making is high, I would argue you're making a poor decision, regardless of how you're deciding, for or against. You don't have the data. You may think you do. It's sort of like the old Monty Hall problem. You think, you intuit the answer, and lo and behold, you're wrong. So I would like to ga gather the data, discuss this, get some fair comparisons, and move forward with a decision. What do I want to see as an alderman? I want to see competitive pay, a good work environment, and, and not a lot of people leaving the city. And by competitive pay, I mean competitive compensation. Right now, I, I, I don't know where we are versus the 50th percentile. And believe it or not, you don't either. You may think you do, but then we sort of get back to this Monty Hall problem. You may think you know the answer. You don't probably know the answer. So if we could get a study like that, I'm guessing Northern Illinois University has similar sized cities. If we could create a competitor list of similar sized cities, if we could put the numbers together in total, compensation and benefits, I think we would have a really good discussion. Right now, we're just sort of shooting from the hip. Again, compensation defined as the total amount of monetary and non-monetary pay provided to an employee by an employer in return for work performed as required. That's what I would like to see. I would like to compare that to similar cities, and then I would like to make a decision. Thank you. Before I recognize Maladra and or Bruno, anyone on the council has not yet spoken to Alderman Marks? You know, after last week's meeting, um, I'm, I'm concerned about how we're going to pay for this and the costs. 
you know, what was quoted up there were salaries. So I went back and I looked, and, and if you look at our payroll taxes and the pensions, it's actually another 19% that we're adding to that. So out of the 253,000, we're really spending 301. If you look at the 160,000 out of the general fund for one year, we're spending 190,000. We were gonna say we we're gonna take it out of reserves, and, and I'm not sure that's the place to take it from. You know, reserves, as, as in a report that was issued by the Government Finance Officers Association, says reserves provide a government with options to respond to unexpected issues and afford a buffer against shocks and other forms of risks. I'm not sure spending reserves is the right answer here. This is when you look at it over a period of years and you look at other raises that would go into this, this is a multi-million dollar decision we're making. Over a five-year period, if we just give 1% raises to the whole 253, the, but we're going to have spent over five years $1.5 million. Over 10 years, $3.1 million. 1.5% 1 is $1.5 million. 10 years would be $3.2 million. A 2% increase, over five years, we're going to have spent $1.5 million. And over 10 years, $3.3 million. This is a big, big number we're looking at. And if we're going to pay for if we're going to do it, and, and you know, listen, I'm for it. We've got to pay our people competitively. But let's make sure we're looking at it and paying for it right. You know, if we take reserves this year, we dig a bigger hole next year. You know, we've got to make up the 190000 we pulled out plus the raise next year. Reserves aren't meant for everyday operating expenses. We've been told that over and over again. They're there for when we hit a bad snowstorm. A bad winter, we've got to touch in the reserves. Reserves, bonding companies do not like you looking, looking at you spending your reserves for everyday operating expenses, and that's what we're doing here. If we're going to do this, my, my, uh, my opinion would be is let's figure out how we're really, truly going to pay for this in the long run. These are big numbers. That's all I have. Alderman Swanson. Uh, those are... Interesting numbers, uh, Alderman Marks, uh, in the aggregate, and I think we need to look at this also with an eye on the budget, because mm -hmm. your numbers are extrapolating everything out at our current staffing levels. Correct. And, right. and, and I think another piece of this puzzle is how many FTEs we have on Good board. Good point. Not going to argue with and you. Now. Raising the salaries is one piece, one variable, but then we need to look at what our FTE count is going forward. Correct. And, and that is pensions, that is salaries, that is everything. Right. And I'm, I was just looking at what we have now and assuming we were going forward. That, that is a valid comment. Yes, if FTEs drop, that is, but, but when we're looking at it now based upon that, that's, Absolutely. that's the numbers. And I just wanted to make people aware of that. Sure. And, 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 that's all. and I had one question, I, I think for Stephanie, when we created the budget, which was before some of our time on the council, what was communicated and what was baked into the budget for compensation? We were told to budget nothing. Okay, so the, the budget increase was zero based on the results of this study. So we have an obligation based on that to once the study is done to honor that obligation. But going forward, I think we can look at FTE count. And if I just make one clarification, the general, it's, it's several funds, 54% is from the general fund. The general fund number that we spoke of last week did include benefits okay. and pension. They, they, the they totals just said did salaries. not, yeah. but when we broke it down just for the general fund, since that's typically the fund everybody is most okay. concerned with, that did include everything. That, I, I guess that wasn't clear when, when they had said it was a salary. Thank you. I believe everyone on the council, Alderman McGowan, do you wish to, or Alderman Burghardt for my phone, any questions, comments? Uh, no, I don't have any. Thank you, though. Alderman McGowan? No. Alderman Bruno, Alderman Maladra, Alderman Radecki. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, the, uh, the points made with the, uh, the anecdotal uh, example of the uh, student test scores, uh, I, I, aren't quite uh, apples and oranges with, uh, with this type of uh, example. Uh, in one case, you've got uh, an innate ability of an individual 
it puts them at the uh, uh, extreme end of the uh, or the high, highest percentile. Uh, we're dealing with several negotiated and competitive uh, numbers here. Uh, there's still some merit in uh, in the example, uh, but given the the different nature of what we're looking at here, and given what we're looking at this year, biting off half of it again, I'm I'm not adverse to having a combined compensation study. Uh, but I don't think we're running any risk by biting off half of it now and having that compensation study or, or that policy discussion uh, further on. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Maladra. Okay. Uh, first question. Um, in June, when we decided to do this, do, Stephanie, do you remember what the vote was? At the count, it was unanimous. At the council, it was on the omnibus. Okay. Project work plan. In June, the city has requested a compensation study covering 31 comparable job titles between the two cities and five additional job titles from the Tricom Central Dispatch. The city has established comparable municipalities and expressed a desire to collect salary information from these organizations. To our understanding of the pressures, municipal budgets, we have presented two options for collecting local salary data. So that thing that we voted on in June didn't say anything about compensation equaling salary plus benefits. It talked about salary. When you go for a job interview and you ask, answer the question, what do you get paid? If you answer it with your total compensation, you won't be hired. The question of what do you get paid is about what you get paid. And this was a study into what people are getting paid. That's what we voted for. That's what we got back. That's what we have to deal with now. Uh, but we want to do another study. I'm left with the sense that if we don't get the answers we want, we'll just keep asking for more studies. And we'll just keep throwing out more anecdotal numbers and things like that, but we'll get nowhere. Um, the question of home rural communities comes up a lot these days. And I find it an interesting question. I, I think there's two parts to our, our, our problem with uh, compensation. One is we have to define the problem, and the other one is we have to figure out what the solution is. So to me, in this context, whether or not another community is home rule doesn't really come into play. Somehow I don't see a, a current or potential Geneva employee, employee saying, well, I don't want to go to work in St. Charles or Batavia because they're home rule. They are competition for our talent base, period. Now, what we do about it may be affected by our home rule status, but you want to look for comps, you better look at the comps that are attracting that talent, not the comps that we want. Um, the question of reserves, Rich, I think you have a great point there, but what I'm left with is what do you do when you find a big hole? I know that they're not meant, excuse me, I have to use a clue. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get to All that. I'm saying is if well, let's, let's not it, have a conversation back and forth. Alderman Malaja has the floor. So. Um, I agree that they're not used for operating expenses, but as I said, we've created a gap. Um, I believe that we can step into reserves in this case not, and lower our uh, pool to 24.7% out of 25 our goal is 25, and again, this, this gap that we're looking to close is the result of our own actions, our own figuring, and to a certain extent, our own uh, games. So I repeat, we asked for a study. We got the study that we looked for. Oh, one other point, Don, you're right, we don't know. I don't know anything. I don't think you know everything either. I don't think any of us knows everything, but what I do know is this. In 2016, we did a benefit survey, and it came back that Geneva is comparable. That's out there. That's known information. And I know that in 2017, we're looking at another study that says that we're low on salary. You can add them together and do whatever you want, but the facts are that the information is benefits comparable, salary low. So 
we got the study. We got a study. We got the study we approved unanimously. It says here's a, here's an issue. We debated that issue at the committee the whole last week. We all said that this is something we need to address last week. Now we've decided evidently it's not something we need to address or it's something we need to kick around until we get the answer that we're looking for. And I'm not exactly sure what that answer is. I don't think we're going to get any answer that says we're too high uh, relative to other cities. We may tailor it down to non-home rule cities in the non-collar counties. So some city down in Joe Davies County might <clears throat> have some numbers that appeal to us. But what do we, how many times do we have to look at the same gap before we tackle it? Um, so again, we asked for it, we got it, now we're dodging it. I don't agree with that. Alderman Radecki. Uh, thank you. A couple of quick points. One is, I don't think it was ever the intent of this uh, council that if we did not adopt this policy, that people wouldn't get raises this year. That would, n I would never support that. That would be an incorrect assumption if we had zero, there's no placeholder waiting for the study and we didn't adopt this, it would never be my intent to let that happen, nor do I think it would be anybody on this council that would intend for that to happen. Um, th this, it's kind of frightening to me, this discussion right now. To, to think that we asked for information from a source to make a decision, not abdicate to that source to make the decision for us. It's frightening to think that we get a report not even before the meeting handed to us and we're supposed to adopt it in whole, all parts and part, everything they said. But what if it was we were at the 22nd percentile and had to bring it up $14 million or we were above and had to bring it down? We wouldn't do that. That would be irresponsible and that would be abdicating our responsibilities, not, not letting an outside consultant tell us how to run our business here. I think the fact that we're having this conversation now clearly illustrates my point that we need to have more conversation about it. If we didn't have three meetings over it, the first meeting was to say, let's get a report to get the information. We have not had three meetings. We've had one meeting about it with a report that was handed to us at the meeting. So if you're comfortable making a multi-million dollar uh, decision based upon that, then go ahead and, and, and vote for this today. But I'm going to offer a friendly amendment right now that we postpone or that we move this discussion to our next policy um, uh, discussion, which I don't know, when is that scheduled? What's our... January 29th, 25th. I believe. 29th, correct. To, to January 29th in the, in the interim, rather than take the vote today. That's a uh, friendly Alderman, amendment. That, that's, yeah, a, I got that, that's a motion. That's a friendly amendment, I would guess, to the motion, motion to on amend. that. A motion, yeah, motion, motion to, to amend. amend. The current one to say, I'd like to move it to a policy discussion in January and not vote on it today. All right, just so I, I got It's not a motion to... defer this action to that date. No, it's a, it's a motion to, to amend to amend the motion to direct this discussion continue at a policy discussion which is scheduled next for January 29th. Correct. But the motion if the clerk could read the motion on currently. It's to adopt and recommend. That's why I'm trying yeah, the to the current motion is to adopt exactly. The current motion on the floor, ladies and gentlemen, is to recommend adoption and implementation of the compensation and classification plans for fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19 as presented. The amendment offered by Alderman Rudecki is to postpone discussion on this matter and pick up discussion on the January 29th, 2018. Correct. Period. Thank you. Uh, second. On the amendment, questions or comments? Alderman Ruby. Can I ask a question on the amendment? Question? Or does it have to relate to the amendment? Should relate to the amendment. I'll, I'll ask it. Okay. <laughs> um, you mentioned that you didn't, that you still intended for um, employees to get raises this year, but if, if the council directed Stephanie to put zero in the budget, how would that be possible is my question. I just don't understand logistically how that would work. Probably yeah, the question's, been, the question's been asked. It's, it's not to give, it, we would just simply readopt the schedule that we have for raises. 
the plan that we have, and that's what we would use. It's, it's not directing zero. No. It's that we would use the plan that we're currently using to calculate. Right? The, the direction I was given, I asked the question, should I put a placeholder in for wages, which would continue with the plan we had, or should we go out for the, the survey? The council directed me to go out for the survey and to budget zero for the wages. So if we were to do any wages, it would be the same thing. You would have to decide if it's just a merit based on COLA or whatever, and you would still have to dip into reserves because that dollars weren't, because you'd do a budget amendment because those dollars were not budgeted. Thank you. But on the amendment, ladies and gentlemen, questions? Clarify her to Alderman Ruby's question. I don't think this would be a very complicated thing to simply adopt the program that we have and use the structures that we have and go forward with our salary program. If we're going to dip into I would need direction reserves, from council go if what, what number we're using because we typically do a market survey and base that on and so if council directed us to do it that way then that yes that's what we do it's not that it's not that difficult. Thank you. On the amendment Alderman Burkhart. Uh, no nothing for me thank you. Mr. Clerk, uh, on the amendment, a simple majority affirms the amendment. If not, then the main motion remains on the table. Hey, Mike Bruno. Nay. Kara Burkhardt. Burkhardt, aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Nay. Craig Maladra. Nay. Richard Marks. Aye. Jean McGowan. Nay. Jim Radecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Nay. According to my records, uh, the amendment fails. Four I votes, five and A votes. The main motion is back on the floor. The main motion was offered by, excuse me, Alderman Bruno, seconded by Alderman Marks, to adopt and implement the compensation and classification plans for fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19 as presented. Questions or comments regarding said motion? Alderman Cummings? Uh, I, w I was asked, we were all asked, what do we do about this gap that exists in compensation? Uh, I'm not sure that there is a gap. Again, Take the extreme example of somebody getting X amount of dollars in salary, and it's a little bit less than the average, and they're getting X plus in benefits, and there is no gap. But the person turns and says, you know, I want to get a little more salary because it's slightly below the average. And the employer says, take a look at your benefits. Getting slightly above in benefits. The item that you sign when you join a company is a compensation packet. It includes salary benefits, vacation days, rules and regs of the corporation. When I voted for, asked for, and voted in favor of a compensation study, I wanted a compensation study. I haven't gotten a compensation study. And so I can't judge how Geneva is compensated when I don't have a compensation study. We cannot look at salary without looking at benefits, putting the two together and comparing them to other cities. Is, where is the flaw in that logic? Benefits plus pay equals compensation. Compensation for Geneva compared to benefits plus pay equals compensation for St. Charles, for Batavia, for any of the other cities. Now we have a comparison. Right now, I can't do that. If you can do that, show me the data, show me the money, and I'll make a quick decision. Right now, we cannot do that. But if you're comfortable making that decision, I'd love to hear the reasoning. Love to hear how you can make a decision minus 50% of the data and have some high surety factor that you're making a good decision. Thank you. Uh, 
from the dais or Alderman Burkhart? Anything? Nothing on my end. Thank you. From the dais? Anyone from the audience? Tom Simonian, 921 South Batavia Ave, Geneva. Um, Mayor, I've heard, if I, I've heard you say it once, I've heard you say it a dozen times, that I support the will of the council. And in that January meeting, which I was part of, the will of the council regarding this study was as follows. The intent of the study was to validate whether Geneva's comp compensation, both salary and benefits, were competitive with communities like Geneva and the private sector. If they were not competitive, we would make them competitive. If they were overcompensated, an adjustment would be made according to the, uh, to be competitive. Also, aldermen and alderwomen were to be involved in the vetting of the company who will be doing the study. I made that point in that meeting. That didn't happen. Aldermen and alderwomen were also to be involved during the study and during the collection of data, which that did not happen. Um, the study itself, so let's just take a look at the study as it is. In my, this is all in my opinion. Study is incomplete. I believe there's three factors being, uh, to being competitive. One is salary, which the study did uh, a good job on. One is, well, I shouldn't say good job because I don't believe that the uh, uh, communities that they compared us to are like communities. They're more like communities to Batavia. Uh, one is benefits and one is in the environment, the Geneva factor that everybody talks about. And this study has only included one factor, and that's the salary. Um, but even with the salary component, the study has found that Geneva is competitive with other communities and very highly competitive with the private sector. Uh, the last time a study like this was done in, was in 2005 and 2006. Here we are 12 years later, and this study shows Geneva to be competitive with 12 communities compared to and extremely competitive to the, I think, eight or nine uh, private sector companies. That speaks volumes to me. I believe that if we were compared to like communities um, and included benefits and the Geneva factor, that we would be highly competitive. Alderman Rudecki said it correctly last week, that uh, this is a solution looking for a problem. If Geneva was not competitive, would we have the people we have staying as long as we have in this community? When Dan Dingus left, not for compensation reasons, um, did we not fill that role with a very qualified individual in Rich Babica. When Tom Dahl from finance left, not for compensation reasons, did we not fill that role with a very qualified individual in Rita Cruz? When Alan DeVita left from the economic development, uh, and I don't know why she left, but did we not fill that role with a very qualified individual in Kathleen Chemachenko? And I apologize to Kathleen if I didn't say it correctly. Did these folks come to Geneva in director roles because we were not competitive? And how many folks applied for those positions? I don't think enough credit is given the Geneva factor, factor that no study is going to capture, but we are all the beneficiaries of. And uh, lastly, um, the gentleman from Gallagher who presented here last week could have very easily made the, made the uh, assumption that the, stu that, uh, the study um, satisfied what it is uh, that we we're looking for, and that is to be competitive. Uh, there is no, if we had a problem, in other words, if we were losing a lot of people and not, not being able to bring qualified or quality people in, I'd say, yeah, we, we have a problem. 
But this was not what the direction of the council was back in that January meeting. It was to include salaries and benefits, the entire package of compensation. That's how I understood it to be, and this is not what was delivered. But even what was delivered makes us very competitive, in my opinion. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? From the dais? Alderman Burghardt, anything? Uh, no, thank you. Alderman Maladra? Uh, direction of the council um, is an interesting thing. In fact, the direction of the council was to go for RFQ for this study. And the direction of the council was a unanimous vote in June to do a study of the work order that I just read. Uh, to me, that is the direction of the council. Um, there are things that people wanted. There are things that people didn't want. Some of those happened, some of those didn't. Um, the overall level of whether or not we're competitive, I, I touched on that last week as well. Um, at a high level, it looks like we are. Uh, the troublesome thing is when we, when we get into it, where we are not is at the upper level positions. And um, I think an a imbalance in all positions is dangerous, but I think that we'd be particularly vulnerable amongst our directors, our managers, our, our skill positions, to use a sports term. Um, and that's where, the, that's where the gap is, and that is an issue. And lastly, as far as the Geneva factor goes, at some point I have to wonder what the Geneva factor looks like when, when the council makes it clear that your livelihood is up to almost like a roll of the dice. Thanks. Alderman Radecki? Oh, did you just say a roll of the dice? That's exactly what we're doing right now. Because listen, you don't a, have just a reminder that all comments should be made to the chair. Sorry. Uh, listen, I, a final comment. Will, my final comment. Thank you for recognizing me. You're welcome. Uh, look, if I had a restaurant and I had 20 people working there, and I had a successful restaurant, and it was successful for a dozen, a dozen years, and 12 years ago I thought, you know, I'd really like to do something different. I'm going to be, I want to read keep good people, I want to be competitive, and uh, lo and behold, 12 years comes by and my restaurant's doing just fine. Um, but I'm, I'm scraping, my reserves are a little bit tough, but I want to, do you think I would go in and dip into my kids' college education fund to go ahead and pay more money to my employees because I wanted to be sure that I was guarding against something that hadn't already happened, something that's not been demonstrated? You wouldn't do it if you owned your own business. I mean, that's kind of my final point is, you know, if you're an owner of this business, in my opinion, you, you don't make this decision. You are rolling the dice if you do not have more information, if you do not have other consideration. The fact that we've actually had a lively, decent conversation now after we've had the study and had time to actually think about it, I think illustrates that. So again, my fear is that going too quickly is unfair to the employees. I think we should be more fair to them rather than just accept a, a third party consultant's report at face value that we're gonna adopt is what our policies are, so. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you for recognizing Thank you. me. Alderman Swanson, Alderman Cummings. Just to uh, address Alderman Radecki, I do own a business, and I do face this type of decision, and I don't ever not give employees raises because no one has left in the last year, and I want them to stay. And I don't say you're not going to get a raise because no one has left and we don't have a problem, because I know in the future when they start leaving, I will have problems and I'll have much bigger problems than the raises would have uh, alleviated. So, so I think that's incorrect to say if you owned a business, you would not do this. You want to be fair, you want to at least be meeting the marketplace and you want to keep your employees because I know that turnover is very, very costly. So I, I disagree with your assertion that no business owner would do that. Thank you. Alderman Cummings. I'm obviously not happy with the study, so it would seem a little bit disingenuous for me to then remind people, but maybe I should. We had 
the consultant stand here a week ago and tell us we ranged from competitive to very competitive. Now, I don't accept the report, period, but if you do accept the report, please think back seven days ago when he stood here and he said, you are competitive to very competitive. And then explain to the taxpayers why over the next five years in a competitive to very competitive salary environment, you've decided to peel off another million and a half bucks. Again, you're competitive to very competitive in salaries, yet you're going to spend an additional million and a half dollars over five years. That's, if the taxpayers don't ask that, I, then, I've lost, then I've lost all hope. Again, I don't accept the report, but if you do, please keep in mind, we are competitive to very competitive. Thank you. Question. Question, Alderman Water. Accepting this report adjusts ranges. The dollar amount that we're talking about, it, 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 it adjusts positions that none of us would consider to be competitive or very competitive. Is that an accurate statement? Sorry. The report addresses ranges. The report specifically the ranges don't cost us the dollars. ranges don't cost, cost us, us dollars is we're adjusting certain positions those positions that we're adjusting would not be found competitive or very competitive so it's you know we can look at it in an aggregate and smile and pat ourselves on the back and say we don't have a problem or we can adjust the problems that we face um, that to me is what I think we're right so the ranges adjusting the ranges don't cause you any money right but when you have people that fall below the minimum now because the range has moved, we are trying to bring those people up to at least the minimum, and then we were looking at everybody else where they fell within that range so that you don't end up with compaction and compression issues right. based upon the years of service that they have been in that position. Mm -hmm. So not everybody, you know, is getting, you know, I think the average increase is 3% overall. But there's people who obviously are getting more, and there's people who are getting less. Less. Based upon the range change, right, I just and wanted penetration. It, it, it's 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 not a big blanket thing. It's it's a targeted thing, and it's addressing areas where we are not competitive to very competitive. Alderman Burkhardt, anything? No, nothing for me. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Clerk. On the motion, item 11A. Mike Bruno. Hi. Tara Burkhardt. Burkhardt, aye. Don Cummings. Nay. Becky Ruby. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. I, I, I'm still not clear how we're paying for it, so I have to vote nay. Keen McGowan. Aye. Jim Radecki. Nay. N nay. Nay. Robert Swanson. Aye. Mm -hmm. Ayes are six, nays are three. The motion passes. We skip down to item 13, new business. Any new business for any member of the council? Alderman Bruno. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> we just threaded the needle of another. Oh, is Gene not here anymore? <laughs> well, shout out to the Chamber of Commerce. We had another incredible uh, Christmas walk weekend. Uh, weather obviously enhanced things, but uh, thanks to all the volunteers and, uh, and workers that made it happen and all of our uh, staff that uh, made it all run smoothly and safely. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the dais? Alderman Burkhardt, any new business you'd like to share? Or? No, th except for that I wanted to, you know, second Alderman Brew, I went on the uh, house tour, and I think it was 
the best one in, in years, the uh, Christmas house tour put on by the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. From the audience, any new business? Seeing none, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So motion by Alderman Marks. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Alder aye. Alderman Burkhart says aye. Burkhart, aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.